denunciation of uh, Stalinism whilst he was in exile in Paris in 1951, the Polish poet and diplomat Czeklo Miłacz wrote in his seminal book, The Captive Mind, that men will clutch at illusions when they have nothing else to hold to. Now, he was, of course, admonishing his fellow citizens who had sought to convince themselves that any progress was to come from the road to servitude that had been planned for Eastern Europe in the wake of two world wars. And as we reflect today on the Herculean tyranny that has engulfed the people of Europe in the form of gulags and gas chambers and a wall in Berlin, it is surely right that we reflect and ask ourselves if we really want to embark upon the road that the government is asking us to next week. Because here we have a government asking this parliament to clutch at their illusions. And as we consider the document that seeks to sever our membership of the Union of Europe, we should remind ourselves time and time again what that great peace project was born out of. As Europe stood as it did for years at the gates of hell, it was great leaders across the continent who pulled it back and authored the fragile but imperfect peace that millions of us enjoy today. And those of us who believe in it, Mr Speaker, should defend it and guard it with jealousy. After centuries of war amongst our people, a pan-European social, diplomatic and economic architecture underpinned by rules, reason and a desire to keep the peace is what our forefathers gifted to us. And UK citizens have been amongst the largest beneficiaries and most enthusiastic participants, not least in Scotland. Just look at the rhapsodic uptake in freedom of movement, where once the skies and waters of Europe were filled with warring air forces and navies, now our skies are filled with innumerable airlines packed with people going across waters and skies that were once the scenes of war, taking part in free movement across a market of 500 million people. Gone are the days of tyranny, of war and of walls, and instead a new EasyJet generation have had their hearts and minds opened up to the continent. Yeah, yeah. Now we've all been made immeasurably richer by the ability to move around the continent, driven by a desire to do commerce, exchange ideas and experience new cultures and share our own. And surely this is an unparalleled triumph of democracy, freedom of movement. The opening up of the nations of Europe, Mr Speaker, and all of the advancement of humankind that has followed. And look at what it's done for Europe. Look at what it's done for the countries who were once the satellite states of the Soviet Union or who lived under one of Europe's assorted dictatorships. It's transformed nations and economies. Where once stood communism or Nazism, there stands now democracies across the continent with free press, open economies, civil societies and strong democracies. The freedom of movement is quite literally the living embodiment of the freedom that wars have been fought over. And yet here we have a government that presents the ending of that diplomatic achievement as some kind of gain. Mr Speaker, only a fool could think this. Only the historically illiterate could champion on the ending of the freedom of movement. In my own constituency, there are just under 1,500 EU nationals who are in active employment, many more studying or living in retirement. Now, I can't, in all good conscience, Mr. Speaker, return and tell them I voted to end the very right that allowed them to come here as a right worse. In order to do so, they'll have to pay £65, a tax on foreigners is essentially what it is, and they'll have to go through a registration process, all to enjoy rights that they currently enjoy right now and have done for decades. Mr Speaker, I do foresee Scotland uh, regaining our independence. I want it with every single fibre of my being. I believe that the nations of the UK will always be the friendliest of neighbours, looking out for each other and looking out for each other's interests in the different forums that underpin the international rules around the world. Sure. Which currency would that independent Scotland use? Oh, to the issue at hand. But the current constitutional arrangement, Mr Speaker, forbids Scotland doing that on an equal footing, either with our neighbours in the rest of the UK or indeed with the other nations of the European Union. And we in Scotland can see every day, whether the honourable gentleman likes it or not, the cost to Scotland 
of not being an independent country and a member of the European Union. Instead, we are locked in a union which has little appetite to take Scotland's interests into account. Nobody is buying the empty platitudes of the plucky Brit that once struck a chord at home and abroad. Mr Speaker, this stuff is the stuff of white noise that is making us a laughing stock in the capitals of Europe. So I don't want this miserable deal imposed in Scotland, but I also don't want it imposed in the people of the rest of the United Kingdom. It is solipsistic, it is isolationist, at times it's even capricious, Mr Speaker, and I want nothing to do with it. This is a deal that puts us on a devastating path as the security landscape across, across the continent and wider world is ever more complex. So I won't vote for a deal that discards our security needs, a need that the government feigns to take seriously. But, Mr Speaker, in concluding, I wish to say this. On December the 11th, when we were originally to vote on this deal, that day marked five years since the then Yanukovych government in Ukraine opened fire on young protesters in Maidan Square who wanted to join the European Union. How perverse that this sorry government would ask us to vote to leave that European Union, marking five years from when the so-called Heavenly Hundred were killed by their own government for wishing to join the European Union. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I say this to progressives around the UK. Scotland has stood by you since Brexit was voted for in 2016. When Scotland finally, finally regains its independence and seeks to join the European Union as an independent member state, I say to our progressive friends around the UK, just as we stood by you, we want you to stand with us. Here, here.